What up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mug talking to you today about Kill Team Gallowfall, which just went on pre sale over on the Games Workshop website. And this is funny because I haven't really been keeping up with any of the Kill Team stuff. I feel like uh, I had some minor interest in the Kill Team box that came out for the Orc Commandos and the Death Core of Krieg because, number one, everybody loves the Death Core. Seeing them in plastic was a huge mind-blowing experience that uh, I, I don't think it's taken off because they, they didn't release them. What Games Workshop should have done was release those Death Core of Krieg box, like as a box set with the Astra Militarum Cadian Shock Trooper release. Like they should have had some Cadian boys or some uh, Death Core of Krieg like Rough Riders with the horses instead of just those Attilian Rough Riders. I think they could have done some really amazing things. But I, I get it. You don't want to steal Forge World's lunch. It's just, it would have been so cool to see them come out with the rest of the Acadian stuff. Okay, but today we're not talking about those boxes. Today we're talking about Gallowfall, which is of uh, some intense boarding actions in the 41st millennium. And I haven't really, like I said, I haven't really been keeping up with the these boxes and these games. You get some beautiful terrain pieces. Uh, like I've I've always known that these boxes had these really cool looking Space Hulk terrain pieces. But uh, what I really wanted to talk about was the feel of this box compared to the other smaller games where you had the kill teams packaged in. And it was mostly just kill teams doing what they do uh, and fighting with their special rules and doing special objectives and whatever. This actually feels like the kill team for the League of Votan were tailor-made to be fighting in a ship. Whereas a lot of the other kill teams, like the Death Corps of Krieg and the Commandos, looks like you could just build up a specialized kill team and throw them into any scenario. They weren't really um, special. These guys feel like they were made to be put in a ship, to be telling this narrative story where they're hunting for all this lost data and uh, you've got these guys who look like they're equipped for spaceship combat uh, rather than just fighting on a planet in any generic war zone. You've got the Cognitator, the, uh, uh, the guy with the data slate over here on the left. And I like how they've got different funny names too. But I mean, when you just look at the miniatures, yeah, sure, they're League of Votan, they're, they're dwarves in space, they're the new squats 2.0. But these guys look like they have their jobs cut out for them. Like they're specialized troops. They're not just soldiers with uh, some extra equipment. Uh, they do look like even <laughs> you could tell here they've got the same pairs of legs. Just the fact that one guy has that data slate and the locator has um, the special equipment on his arm. Like they're both fulfilling different tasks. You're painting them up differently to do different things and different jobs. Uh, you've got this guy down here at the bottom, the lugger, whose job it is to just basically lug all of the specialized equipment around. So you've got all of this equipment on his back. Like when I looked at these models and I read the article, it felt like I was reading a story of a band of League of Votan who are on the spaceship and they're actually performing a job and they're telling a story. And it reminded me a lot of <laughs> like if dwarves, uh, space dwarves were in... Uh, event horizon and all that stuff happened like how would they react how would they fight their way through this uh, space hulk if they're losing start they start losing their number right to the chaos beastmen and uh, they start having to make choices and make sacrifices and like fight to the last man and each of them who's got this really specialized skill set once you start losing these team members for your kill team, how do the rest of your team compensate? Like, does that mean that suddenly your route to success in certain areas gets closed off because you no longer have this specialist who could have gotten the job done? Do you have to ignore certain objectives now or forgo those for just the survival of your squad? Like where it becomes less of accomplishing a mission that you're going up there to do and now it becomes just basic survival, fight for your life, get to the uh, escape pods and get off the ship before the thing blows up. Like that is a awesome narrative storytelling uh, device that you've like, this is the first time I feel like a kill team has really been tailor made for what the box is uh, all about, which is just uh, time is running out. The ship is going to blow up. You have a limited amount of time to do what you need to do and get off the ship. So I feel like any kill team, like if you put veteran 
Death Corps of Kree guardsmen in there or a kill team of commando orcs and you give them this mission, then it's like, uh, yeah, okay. I mean, it's just a regiment that's it's like an army regiment from any 40k faction that's in there with the situation. Whereas I really feel like this group of League of Votan, uh, each crew person, each member of the kill team has a very specific job and uh, they're not just ripped off of the tabletop game and plucked out of uh, any standard army and put into the situation. Whereas I feel like the commandos uh, maybe were, as well as the uh, the Death Corps of Krieg veteran. Even the Chaos Beastmen, like I get that they're the defenders and they've all got some special wacky abilities, but like they don't feel as specialized and as, as core to the concept of what this game is than these guys here, who is just like plugging away, getting on the Space Hulk, going room to room, clearing it out, looking for the data, extracting it, and then getting to the escape pods as quickly as possible. I love the look of these dwarves. I love the concept of them going through this Space Hulk. And it really makes me um, intrigued about the game, even though I haven't had any experience building any kill teams or whatsoever. Uh, I do see the kill team boxes in my local game store, and I've just never been interested in them. But seeing uh, this article, reading the article, even looking at the Beastman sprues, it's like, yeah, okay, Beastman in space. But it's what the League of Votan, what they did, what the designers did with the aesthetics and the concept of what they are. They're diving into ships, uh, looking for, uh, looking to complete their mission before they extract, before the whole thing blows up congratulations games workshop i think you really nailed it with this one more than so many of their box sets now where they're just like looking for an excuse to put a couple of new miniatures bundled together with some crazy special rules i think this one really knocked it out of the park so uh hats off two thumbs up uh if i if i could i would definitely pick up this box set especially for the league of otan uh, crew and uh, I don't know, it looks like fun. If you haven't had experience with the Gallo Dark um, game and you don't have all of these really nice looking terrain pieces, then maybe this might, be, this might be a good way to go. This might be a good purchase for you. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. What do you think? Are you excited about any of these smaller games self-contained with their own rules where you don't need to go out and buy a whole entire army? And... Um, play some good narrative missions, tell some fun, awesome stories. I think it might be good for like an evening of gaming. You and your buddies just like knock one of these scenarios out. Uh, I think that might be just as fun as pulling two armies, throwing two armies against each other on a tabletop in any standard, you know, 40k game that we've played hundreds and hundreds of times. All right, let me know what you think down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Head on over to the Discord. We are plugging away at the Summer Painting Challenge 2023. If you have a project you want to paint up this summer, then uh, that's where you do it. 31 days of hobby, anytime between the months of May and August. It's amazing. Thanks to my uh, sponsors, my patrons, Daniel Sprinkle, Play It Painted, Dicey Guy, and Pix. If you'd like to join them, the links to my Patreon is down below in the comments as well. Have a great day. Latest players!